Where are you guys at? Any questions? I'm, I'm good up to here. I, I think I'm good. I, I, I mean, I'm like you. I'm going to have to do some reading and this, well, that, and the other, and studying. It's, study it's and going to be going out there and playing with it. Right. That's going to get me, yeah. and then I'll be going, crap. I just, I just like that. I, don't know. <laughs> I promise you. You are saying, you get a bail in here, you get a bail that busts here. You can just kick everything out, put your locks on, kick everything out, dig that out, and it'll stay right on the same cycle. Mm -hmm. Yep. But by this one, with the iPad, you can reverse that and you blow the bail the right yep. on out. You yeah. don't even have to get out of the tractor. Yeah. So you need a 200. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sit like that. And the air conditioner's working. I, yeah. yeah. I, so I know that, how that Texas heat is. just for all your shape and everything to fall through. It is. Um, <laughs> You've been reversing it, it enough. Yeah, so it's still cut out the same for the Model 100 right. um, for the chaff and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, um, yes, you can reverse it. I will tell you through experience, it is not a catch-all. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it will help you. I'll just be in my Yeah, times. no, it's all good. It's all good. I would get out and look and make sure because that's the last thing I want to do. Yep. It'd take me a minute to do an hour job if I screw around. <laughs> and I'll turn it into an hour. But, but just to recap, something, machine stops, have an issue, monitor, ready lights. <laughs> that's, that is your Bible. I've had people call up and say, uh, Machine stopped. It. It's just not working. What does the monitor say? Photo one ready for bail. Throw a bail in it. Oh, okay, it works. <laughs> so I mean, it's, if you're not used to it and you don't know what to expect, that you know, and that's that's just part of understanding how the machine thinks with the red and green lights and all that kind of stuff. Um, you guys were talking earlier about um, is there a reset? Is there a clear to this? And I was like. Um, the reset bundle up in the banding box, okay? And hop up there, I'll just go ahead and show you so you have a visual, hopefully emotional connection not to touch the button, you know? <laughs> um, anyway, I'll, show, I'll hop up on top here. Okay. <laughs> See, the, see yeah. the green buttons right here? Mm -hmm. Reset bundle, reset strapping. You will never have to push this button because you can do that all from your iPad. This is your reset strapping in order to uh, retie and everything like that. Um, retie. Well, rethread, sorry. As is far as putting a new strap, putting in, a new strap got, on. Then I can hit the iPad and it'll say, mm -hmm. like putting in new bundles. Yep. Okay. So and if, it's you really start your, if you start your uh, banding down there, you hit this and it threads it itself? No. No, no, that is giving it the bail count or the bundle count of how many oh. bundles oh, it can produce. Number. I was you thinking the same thing. Yeah. You where it sucks the strap around and nope. doesn't know it's ready. No, nope. I got you. That just counts. So you thread it on your own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, reset bundle. I beg of you, do not push that button. Button. Um, the only time that you want to push that button is with hydraulic all shut off and you've cleaned the machine completely out. Any time that you take bales out of the machine. Um, that's when you hit that. Yeah, because that's for the maintenance or for cleaning. You're for cleaning, um, even for tech support. Sometimes <laughs> it is good to clean the machine out, but we're talking rare occasions. Okay. Well, if you want it reset, you'll. I mean, if we don't reset it and we go through everything, you'll tell us, hey, let's reset the thing. Exactly. Okay. Right. Um, well, it, after and you clean it all out. I mean, if you got to reset, it's just starting the whole process over. Anyway. Exactly. It's the strap arm is going to come up. The horizontal plunger is going to come to the back. back it's going to put it back to zero. Yeah, but if you've got four bale in here that you haven't cleaned out, then you can't do that. You no. have to clean everything no. out. No. The hay has to be gone in order for you to hit reset bundle. Oh, um, because that makes a little difference. I didn't. It has to be cleaned out to reset it and make it operate. I, I'm, I'm yeah. simplifying it a little bit because there's always those scenarios. But um, you can actually push this off the bandit. This banding box, you can push it up off the bandit. If there's hay in there and it thinks there's no hay in there, strap guard arms come up, horizontal plunger comes back, and it'll pop that sucker off. So if you're going to have... Uh, Don't it's do going it. to try to put 26 bail in instead of 21. What exactly. You well, in the in, point being, don't yeah, push it. Just, um, I, I can tell you scenario after scenario, and yeah, just yeah. don't do it. Don't do okay? it. Okay? Um, Until we talk to you. Yep, or, or all the hay is out of the machine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and, when I, um, and the thing is, is if you want me to tech it, don't push it. Yeah. Because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, throw hay in it until it fails yeah. again, and then I, then I can work from there. 
But uh, but in reality, the for us to learn what's going on, we need to, without pushing reset, we need to work ourselves through the process. Have y'all been to the website? Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of the stuff on the website. It's what training mm -hmm. videos, videos yeah. and stuff. I had them, but I will. Yeah. Yeah. GFC as a whole is very giving with information. The what ifs, the anything that we can possibly share just to make you guys more knowledgeable because you and I both know if you know the machine and know how to tech it, you're going to be way happier than calling the dealer up and have them come out in the field or calling us up or you know what I'm saying? And uh, the more information we can give you, and that's why we switched over to the iPad, um, it's just it gives you more. Um, more information and, and more um, flexibility with it. But anyway. While we're up here. Yeah. Do these move? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the so that's the strapping. Yep. Ties so the strap. Let, let me step you through the whole twenty one process, okay? So Bell one comes in, sets on the strap guard arms, strap guard arms are up in the box. You can see the uh, the tip of the strap guard arms right here. These fingers flex up and down. Okay, so you've got uh, bail goes on the strap guard arm, vertical plunger pushes it down. Same happens for two. And at three, the compression happens on the vertical position, put new grooves in, and the slides it back. Okay, as the bales get shoved back, the strapping is looped around, just like a baler. As it gets pushed back, it loops around. Right. Okay, it's it's it just carries setting, it back. It's already sitting on the first bale as soon as it goes in. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And so, um, so when we thread it, and I'll show you the threading here after a while. When we thread it, that strapping's coming in, and it tucks in behind these red handles right here. I saw that. Oh, I see. I see the handles. It locks them in place. Yep. And so the strapping will actually hook right in here on these rollers. So whenever that first bale goes down and comes back. That's already looping it around that first, okay, first set. Okay, so it'll be actually just laying right here mm -hmm. and it just pushes it down. Yep. Oh, yep. and then it, something it comes in there in. and brings it in here and it snaps it. It will hold this end until the end, right? What's that? This end will stay here until the end of the cycle. Exactly. Where does it, right. does it come through? Does it, where does it run right here? So the strapping will run straight from that over to these rollers here and will so be clamped going, down. And so it'll be above this track, but as the bales get pushed down in there, that strapping will sink down in this groove. That's why these are chamfered to help feed that down in there. And then it'll end up going back because it's feeding around those bales. I got it, man. I see, how, I see exactly how that was Because this is all your tying mechanism. Yeah, it doesn't here. go under it. Yes. It doesn't go under this sucker. It's all up here. No, so yeah. it ends up going right through down. here. Yeah. Right so down here. it will actually, um, on the tie cycle, these fetchers will actually go forward. It'll lay this strap over. It'll grab the next strap, and when it pulls it back, it'll lay that right over the top of the second strap, mm -hmm. and then the banders will come over, crimp it, cut it, and since that's brought that strap over, it's still got a hold of that other end, right. and it'll drop it down. Start yeah. all over. That, yeah. That's all. Does makes it, perfect it clamp, sense there. Does this clamp the two straps together, or is there, you know, on the So, track? are you familiar with uh, um, the way they strap together uh, bundles of wood with the, uh, it's, a, it's not yeah, an actual yeah. clip, it's yeah. an actual seal. And I'll, I'll show you that whenever One we, thing we'll I'm make some. With is that I've done it before. You put a clip on, you yeah. crank mm -hmm. it, and then tractor, not tractor, yeah. yeah, tractor supply uses that when they're bundling yeah. stuff. That, Th I, this is actually a self-locking seal. It uses its own, the own strapping to, okay. to hook it together. I, I want to see that. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, so uh, bail three goes in, shoves it back. It's looped around. Does the same for tier mm -hmm. six, nine, twelve, eighteen. It's got an example of the crimp. Sweet. So this is the seal. This is cut off on both ends here. And you can see when, see at this point, there's been no tension on the strapping. And when it gets tension, the, the wide part of the bottom strap will slip into the narrow part of the top. Oh. And it's actually 80% stronger than yeah. your normal clips. As a kid, I remember the straps they had on railroad track. I mean, on things on railroad tracks, mm -hmm. they'd come off, have the holes in it, bend it, make a whistle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I think a guy rethread his. Okay. That's These are cool. grease certs. Mm -hmm. Grease them. Um, It'll tell you when. Actually, well, okay. So there is a maintenance thing on the uh, the iPad that'll tell you when to grease, and you know, mm -hmm. it's awesome. 
uh, the banders. Um, it tells you when to maintain your whole machine or certain parts. All of it, as far as on the iPad. It's a, it's a whole. Yeah, uh, yeah. A it's maintenance. not going to show you. You got yeah. 100, but hook onto that one. And we can just take it with us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, the one thing is on the banders, you won't have to grease those very often. Those okay. things um, doesn't take much. Doesn't take much yeah. for that. But uh, we but, do use a lithium grease for that because it's kind of a. It's more of a. More greasy, and it it's, stays longer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so those slide out, mm -hmm. and that's what makes the crimp, the punches the deal yep. in them, honey. Yep. So at bale 21, whenever that last bale gets compressed down, okay, the vertical plunger stays down, the strapped arms stay down, just like every other time, and then the horizontal plunger will compress against the back gates. Now the back gates are like on bale 18; those bales are up against those back gates. Right. And on bale 21. Yeah. If you don't actually adjust, well, these should already be pretty much preset, um, but if you have those cranked down, um, this is actually the valve uh, for that the bunch of bundle tension. If you don't have that, you've got that cranked down, those suckers won't move, and it will flat out make you a brick. <laughs> it, it, will, uh, it will compress a full bale. So you wet. want those back gates, they will need to flex a little bit, and you have them... Yeah, there's no flex to it. Oh, okay. The okay. cylinder actually adjusts out well, that, with yeah, the pressure. Saw, well, they do like a round bell. I mean, it'll compress it at the point. We've done some bells where we couldn't even get the forks to go in. They were so compacted. So, um, you, I don't recommend, even if you've got a loose bundle, I don't recommend stabbing it because you, you're you going to have to pick between the bales because the bale itself, if you ever tried stabbing they're a spear so, or anything, so compressed. the bale itself is not... It's not good to stab. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I would no, suggest. No, my question was, will it compact at that tight if you crank this thing down? You you still have individual bales. Yes, yeah, so it still has the ability to breathe because of the way the hay's cut. You know, I mean, it's just not transferred all the way through. Okay. Um, because it's cut, um, so you still will be able to, um, if you use like thin pallet forks or the little inline spears, be able to pick between the the bottom tier and the second tier. Um, I recommend having the, if, if you're going to use the four inline spears to have them on the bottom of your mass so that you can slip underneath of it, have like a 32 or 36 inch long, um, whatever it is, just a little sm shorter than your bale length so that when you go to stacking, you're not catching the twine of the next one. Um, I've used the really thin pallet forks, the full taper, uh, 32 inch, and then what I like to do is I'll throw a mass on the back of the, uh, the loader and I'll go down through the field, slip underneath, almost not stop. Slip underneath the bundle, set it on the next bundle, and slip, and I'll be carrying 42 bales over. And uh, I'll uh, just, so I don't have to pay attention, I'll set my first bundle, and then I'll go too high, and I'll just stack that sucker. And when that trailer parks in alongside of it, I'll pick it up, and uh, I can, like we had a, uh, a tip bed where I could run right up and set two on at a time. Um, if you're running just from the field to the barn and you don't want to strap it down, just go eight foot long with the bed and go single high. Some guys set a pyramid just like you would a round bale or whatever, then you don't even have to strap them down. Yeah. And uh, if you're going on the road or something like that, I mean, make strapping down yeah. smooth. Like if you're going long distances, I always like to go eight foot across the bed. And if I have, I'll put a mast on the, uh, the front of my gooseneck. And so I'll just set too high all the way back. I'll set one on the back. I tie the back, back one, and then the single one, and I don't tie any of the others. But you put them across the bed, mm -hmm. not running long. Ways. If you're going long distances yeah. and you only want to use two straps, yeah. that's why I go across the bed. Yeah, I hauled 900 bales out to Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, on a flatbed. Yeah. Of these, and nothing ever moved. Yeah. Yeah. I only had my back Were they across the bed or lengthways? Across the bed. Yeah. So we won't be seeing uh, like we always do the round bells in the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Now they they, they stack they really good. Far to go with ours. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Quarter of a mile. But heck, e even if you wanted them, um, like say say you don't have a dock, uh, or okay, say you have a dock in the barn, and you're not going to have a dock out in the field because a lot of people don't have those portable docks. You can take and just uh, set the bundle on the back of the trailer. Next yeah. one, just shove them all the way forward. Shove them all the way forward, and then whenever it goes to the dock, they're already lined out perfect for them to take it off. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. I've seen people um, go up there with the forks, flip them over, or yeah. the spears, flip them over and stab them from the bottom. 
I would want longer spears to at least support mm -hmm. that yeah, second bail, right. but you know, the bundles overall, like the rougher you are with them, the more rounder they get. And I like those crisp, clean bundles, so I want. That's what sells. I, I, I want. <laughs> I, I want to be fragile with them, but the actual bundle itself, you can beat the crap out of them, and they're still, still a decent one. This guy that was loading me, he just run in, just had the spears on the front of the tractor, had a headache on the back of him. He just run in and hit them thing and grab them, pick mm -hmm. them up, and set them on the trailer. Yeah. I've never seen him bust one. But anyway, so on Bell 21, horizontal plunger compresses up against the back gates. Back gates release according to the pressure you have them set at. Once the horizontal plunger makes the full stroke, it makes the full stroke every time. The back gates are what's the variance, right? The strap guard arms come to the top, bringing the strapping up like it always does, except for this time, the fetchers will have already extended over and they will have swung out, okay? This is the fetcher swing, this is the fetcher cylinder, okay? So when it goes and it swings out, strap your arms come to the top, it'll slip those rollers in behind Fetch and bring it, it back, bring it back yeah. okay? These are the banders which will have mid-stroked out. There's mid-band cylinders and full-band cylinders. So the mid-band cylinder, once the strapping has, um, well, before the fetchers have moved, these mid bands have stroked out, causing this piece here to be over top of the slot. Okay? Strapping will lay over the top of it, releasing the strap, but it'll still be crimped or still be held here in this groove. Okay? Lays it over, and then whenever it brings the strapping back and lays it on top of it, then the full bands go ahead and stroke on out, putting that die right over top of it and, and cutting and crimping it. Whenever, the, whenever it's uh, crimped, they'll go, the banners will come back up, swing back over, and it'll drop that, drop that strap right down on the hay. Pretty neat. Mm -hmm. It's all pretty simple there. So it doesn't work in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Get but, up there and hit that button. <laughs> but, I, was, but, I was kind of thinking it's, you know, we'll go to as long as there's no do. So I know there's not going to be anybody that phone at six, seven, eight o'clock. <laughs> gotcha. So biggest problem I've had, something go wrong, and the people don't know what they're doing, and they mess a whole bunch of other stuff up. And so I have to. That's almost hard to reconstruct. Oh, I don't know what they've done to it. You know what I'm saying? It could have messed up, and they say, well, this isn't working, but they. The reason that's not working was three they steps did. ago. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's very important that we go by, we isolate the issue. You know so what I'm saying? You get something on your monitor, stop right then. And yeah. Here's our problem. I'm going to tell him our problem. You know, when something goes down, gotta, Ron wants it running now. Push that reset. Right no, no, don't no, no, do it. Get no, out of here. Tell him about the reset. No. Get out no, of here. We're going to cover it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but people call me up all the time, and it's like, my vertical plunger won't work. My strap cut arms won't work. My horizontal plunger won't work. Or my bander's not coming out. I'm telling you, nine times out of ten, it's not the part that's not moving. It's the step just previous to it. Yeah. Cool. Okay? It has to tell it to move. Exactly. The one before. Yep. And it's done with that step, move to the next. Yep. Hell, I'm ready, Bale. Hey. <laughs> I'm ready. We got a long ways to go yet. Um, I'm going to step through the 200 with the uh, the iPad, and I'll show you guys still yet as well, but I'm going to switch over to that a little bit, okay. um, and then I'm going to start talking wear strips, I know that and, uh, and then we'll go from there, okay? Right. So the banding box is one of the biggest differences between the Model 100 and 200. The okay. One of the biggest differences. Oh. There's a lot of differences between the Model 100 and 200. We changed a lot when it came to it in the sense of like you've got a rail here and it's got bolted on V grooves and then you're going to have V groove rollers and those are going to be adjustable and whatnot. Um, sometimes like it, it's more important for a Model 100 owner to keep the banding box clean. Right. It's going to fill up with chaff, you're going to blow it out, you're going to sweep it out, whatever, um, because if it builds up too much and that cylinder compresses and it catches on something, it could pop it off the track. Yeah, you're talking, this, you're this talking about this give. box here. Yeah. Yes. This, okay. Yes. If you get too much crap in here, this box can give. You yeah. Know, and so off. this carriage here could possibly pop off the track. With a 200, it is impossible. Never seen it happen. It's, it's 
it's not, uh, it can't happen, okay? Um, and I very rarely say it can't happen because if it, <laughs> it will, it will, okay? Um, so with that being said, um, keep the box clean and uh, um, more so on the Model 100, but... Uh, keep the box clean, you talking about one, you know, after a day's use, before you go tomorrow, blow it out, or is it got to be blown out during the day? I would probably blow it out... Lunch? Just every couple okay. days. Oh, a couple of days. If well, you blow it out every day, that way good. you just don't forget. Right. You good? You get those big old leaf blowers, you just blow okay. it out. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, but I think every couple of days, if you're using straw, you're gonna have a whole lot more chaff, yeah, yeah. a whole lot more of that. Yeah, Hay's yeah. not gonna be as bad. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'd say every couple of days, even with straw, you'd be fine. Okay. We'll so they can get build up in here. Yeah. You know, where it can flip that. And all your chaff is actually coming up through the holes. Everything else is pretty much sealed yeah. off. Even you know what I'm the 100. Yeah. yeah. It's, is it the same basic box? It's as basic. This? Yeah, same box. Um, so why does it get so much more in it than the 200? No. No, they all, uh, they all get the same amount, but, but the 200. Oh I, thought, oh, I thought you said 100 was more susceptible to that. Stuff. Well, so it's more susceptible to messing up. To, to messing up with. Um, okay, I got that. You. So the model 200 uh, literally cannot get knocked off the track, so it will compact. You'll see, like right here and here, you'll just see stuff smashed up to nothing, and it don't affect it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Okay, I guess. So, you. so this when the baler's bailing, and you're just clicking down the road. Um, there's going to be, we call them operation codes. It's not necessarily an error code because we want to give you so much information that you, you're familiar with the wording that's coming up there. If you only see it every time you have an issue, then you're gonna forget. It's, it's not going to be familiar. So the, uh, the machine communicates with the monitor every five seconds. So at the point in time of that five seconds, it's going to send an operation code to this location. It's going to tell you vertical plunger going up. Yeah, I mean, it's going to tell you just everything, right? Down to the, t and there's going to be, because the machine works so fast, there's going to be points and times that you're not going to see the same thing over and over because the five seconds is going to land yeah. different, right? So it's just going to give you operation after operation after operation code. The only time that you'll see this insignia, and sometimes if you stop or, it slips on the bail a little bit on the chain, it'll throw up, oh, operation code, this, this, and this. It'll stick on that one because it, it took a little bit longer for that bail to make it up the chamber. That's how fast we're expecting everything to go. If it just slips on that bail a little bit, it's going to pop, oh, oh, okay, we're good. You know what I'm saying? I want you to know immediately when something goes on. bail looser than the other one, you know, it didn't compact the tight, and then it can slip on that. So the only time you're really going to actually pay attention to this is when the machine stops and you can no longer bail, and you look at it and be like, okay, photo two, ready for a bail. Something happened with my vertical chain, I gotta, I gotta fix it, right? Uh, which is not typically the operation code you get, but I'm just saying, right? right? So at that point, you can go in here, and it's gonna start you on the troubleshooting, okay? Is the bail busted? Is the photo, uh, bail a photo one? Is the bail a photo three? You click one, it's going to give you another one. You click one, it's going to give you another one. You know what I'm saying? Just keep going through yeah. the list. So the troubleshooting is pretty cool on here. You can go back and actually search by uh, different questions or operation codes and all that kind of stuff. Now here's where you're going to love this if you learn your reds and greens, okay? Your, your mm -hmm. inputs and your outputs. You can click right here and it's gonna show you what the computer is. If you was to go and open up that box, it's gonna show you the lit lights. Oh, so I don't even have to open the box. I can look at that and, mm -hmm. and say, yeah. And it's fail safe too, because if the computer is thinking it, we don't really care. It's gonna show you, right. okay? So um, so anyway, yeah, that is that is awesome where you don't even have to get out of the oh. tractor and you yeah. can actually look at your red and green lights and if you know them well enough, it, it works pretty good. So capacity, that is idle time of the machine, okay? So if, if there is downtime between any of the photo eyes whatsoever, that's gonna drop from 99%. So you can be like, man, my bales are coming out good, the hay's dry enough, I can push my uh, strokes a little bit, drop my strokes per bale down a little bit, and I can get more tonnage out today 
because of the conditions because I know my band is not full. Right. You know, and you can, you can kind of push. And you can, okay, well, I'm, I'm doing alfalfa today, so I'm probably going to be running about 65% capacity of this machine because my baler just won't take it. I'm going to be running straw. I can run 99% on straw. Right. Um, so stroke count. Uh, if you used to buy a brand new Model 200 machine, and I don't know what you guys worked out on the deal on this, whatever, but you can actually get a stroke counter to go on your baler, okay? And that stroke counter will actually tie into this app, and you can press it, and um, when you turn on the baler, it'll wake that up, and you can actually connect it. So every time the baler ties, it tells you how many strokes per bale. Right. So you can actually be driving down the wind row, and if you know that your baler can produce a good bale at 13 strokes of bale or 12 strokes of bale or 15 strokes of bale, whatever your type, because strokes per bale mean quality of bale. The lower it is, the rougher it's going to be, the higher it is. Yeah, we just put a stroke counter on. Also. Okay, gotcha. And so I actually use a stroke counter as my speedometer. If it's exactly. too many strokes, I'm wasting my time. So you can tie that right into here with, with the stroke counter we've got. Um, as you bale, you're going to see the bales actually being placed. So at a moment's notice, you can look at it and see, okay, i got two stacks and two bales. I've got uh, eight bales in the bundle. And as, it, and as soon as it ties, it's going to disappear and add the next one. Um, emergency stop. You can, that E stop is the same as right there. You can it's still a mechanical device. Exactly. Go ahead and hit the button. <laughs> hit the button. Hit the button. Turn off the hydraulics. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you can't turn it back on. Two fingers with a twist. Okay. To turn it back on. Um, That's probably what'll get me in the middle of the night. I'll forget that little step. <laughs> it, it will. It will have <laughs> a a big old bar across yeah. here. Um, yeah. Hydraulics disabled. But to remember how to turn it on. So. Yep, yeah. <laughs> what I like about that is you, you do two of those steps. Yeah. Uh, you know, from the cab. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. I know how we are. <laughs> so here yeah, is <laughs> just kind of like a manual bail count, right? If you want to use this for the beginning of the year, if you want to use this at the beginning of a job, so you do custom work or whatever, right. you can hit reset. Zero that sucker out, and it'll keep you a bail count. And, and bail count, is that little squares? Individual bales. We okay. do everything based off of little bales. And nothing in the big. Nothing in the okay. big, right? I tell you, it'll do 122 bundles. That is literally the only number I use in the bundles, and I'll still say that's 2,562 little bales. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I still yeah. go back to the bales because that's what people know. That's what they're selling. Right. We're not selling a bundle. Right. You don't make no money selling a bundle because you don't make no money selling a big square bale. Right. You're selling individual bales. So um, you can do stroke counter bales per hour. That is based off of photo three. Okay. That's where we know the bale count. That's where we know how many bales an hour we do off of. It is refreshed every bundle. It is based off of a 42 bale cycle. Okay, so in order to get your bales per hour up, you've got to bale flat out straight for, for two, bundles. two bundles in order to know what your actually bales per hour is. We're not doing it off of no, oh, I bailed three bales really quick and it adjusts it. Okay, yeah. um, and then of course you're strapping. So your strapping right now is at 116. I doubt that's accurate given well, the yeah. circumstance, but anyway, I can go in here to controls. Okay. And I can come in here and say, um, yeah. I need to be hooked up, don't I? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, press and hold. So these, you can, you can change the machine from the cab limitedly. Okay. And we do it on purpose. <laughs> um, we allow you to move your vertical plunger up. We don't allow you to take it down. And we allow you, we don't allow you to open it. So you're not, I can't screw nothing up. It just won't let me do it if I'm fixing to do the wrong thing. Exactly. Good. Well, um, safety issues too. Is safety issues and then like you can tear up your bales, but as far as tearing up the machine, we've limited that. Mm -hmm. So you're not trying to run a vertical plunger into your horizontal plunger. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's why we don't even allow you to manually 
do your horizontal plunger on here because it's got so much power and it's well, got so much potential. Change, change your timing so your vertical come down and hit that. Exactly. Horizontal. So we, we limit that. So we do a press and hold and then you can adjust and whenever I'm actually synced up to it, it'll allow me to change that. If you're saying adjust, you mean just work them. So say for instance, I've got a busted bale or I wasn't paying attention and I was running a straw up and behind each other and I got a bale that's over there, it just went all to pieces, vertical plunger went to close, I couldn't get shut off quick enough and I've got a, uh, a busted bale in there, my customer's not going to like it, I got to clean it out, I got to put a new bale in there because, so, so I'll just step you through that scenario anyway. So. And by the way, if your string is mistied coming out of the baler, right? It's coming out of the baler going into the bandit. If your string is mistied on the right side, it has more of a chance of making it in there intact than if it's on the left. But, I mean, if you don't want... It's, it's not going to hurt the integrity of the bundle. It just matters what your client is willing to yeah. handle, okay? So say, for instance, it just goes all haywire. Vertical plunger closes, pushes it down, you kill it, okay? Well, I want my vertical plunger up so that I can get my hay out, okay? Um, and so I take and I pull my vertical plunger up. Goes up, it's good. Okay, well, my kicker, hay kicked over as well. And it's all messed up into the bale because the bale didn't make it all the way over because doing weird crap, right? And I go and I open up my kicker, okay? At that point, I can hit my e-stop and heat my e-stop over there, kill the hydraulics. You can take your uh, clips off right here, open this up, and of course your horizontal plunger is going to be towards the front because it hasn't pushed the bales back yet or anything like that. And at that point, with the tractor off, pull the straw out and you can slip another bale right up in there. Put everything back to normal, and as soon as it goes back to normal, it'll process it. Okay? Okay, but when you put it back to normal, I mean, do you have, so you have to kick, you have to push, and put everything and back where it was? Or? So, the only things that you can move here are right here. And so, as soon as I do that and it moves oh, it to up. Oh, it says normal. So, it just. Yeah, so say say I did this and I. It knows moved. normal. It, it knows isn't that I have to go, oh, crap, no. that was up. I got to put it, it down. So, it just hit normal and everything goes back and if, then ready to start. If these are not in normal and I go back to here, there's going to be another bar right underneath this that says manual mode. Wow. And you're not going to change good, a thing. Good. It's not going to go. It's in manual mode until you go back to normal, and, figure out what and then it'll allow to process good, it. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That's good. That's so, good thinking. So say this is down to zero. Okay, you did reset strapping. You bailed all of, all the strapping off of it. There's ten bundles left on there, or however many, right? Because when we buy the strapping, it's based off of poundage. So. It might be not overall length, yeah. and if someone has tighter bundles in the it's just right. it goes by poundage, right? Yeah. So I can go in here, it, the machine's going to stop, and it's going to say reset strapping, reset strapping, right? The machine's going to stop, and the machine will always stop at the bell zero position. If it's if that it's, means empty, it well. Um, it's the easiest place to rethread the machine. And that's zero. I mean, that's empty. That's just like... Well, there's still going to be a bundle in there the because back. it's just tight it. You know what I'm saying? It's just tight it, but it's going to stop at bale zero. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so that's before you ever feed another bale in to pull the strapping down exactly. and start that. I got you. Now, exactly. Zero is tied off. So it doesn't matter. Model 100, Model 200, it will stop at bale zero and say reset strapping and there still might be a little bit left on it. So in your case, you go up and hit reset strapping. Okay, I, and it's I gonna, can hit that one. You can hit that one. <laughs> um, it's going to set it to 122, okay? You can run the rest of the spools off, or you can just throw it away and put a new one on, okay? How much is usually left on there? Eight to ten bundles. So if you're paying attention and you got a half of one in there, you can try to finish it well, out? Well, see, or at the 122... Oh, okay. At the 122, you will always have strapping left on here. Right. That's right. Oh, oh, oh. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, at the yeah. 122, you will always have strapping left on here. I've never had it happen. Someone else might have, but I've never had it. Well, are you gambling to get another bundle out for it? Not really, because I know that it takes about four or five revolutions to make a bundle. And so if I look back there and I can't even see the white in the middle, I know I got a couple bundles. 
and so I can just reset it and run it out. You're talking about the white on the, is it on the band well, or is it on the? No, see, um, the, the, you're but, seeing this. I'm seeing this in the middle, you know okay. what I'm saying? You can actually see how many revolutions are left, and if I got four or five, I know I can get another bundle out of it. Yeah, that makes sense. Does this run back and forth? Is that how it's wound, or? Yeah, so as it's. No, I'm saying as it's coming off, it, it moves over to the next, or is it going back and forth? Mm -hmm. It is going back yeah. and forth. Okay. Yeah, be nice if they made the last hundred foot red or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but anyway, so I like to be efficient and use all my mm -hmm. stuff. I don't want extra strapping laying around or whatever. So I like using it to the last. Some people it's just like, it ain't worth my time because it's like, what, seven cents a little bale or something like that. And so they just pitch it and, and, and roll with it. But anyway, um, so you can reset the 122. You're just gonna have to watch it. And then whenever you put the new spools on it, just hit reset strapping again to reamp that 122. Okay, so when you go here, say that uh, your strapping, yeah, your strapping here goes down to zero. It's going to stop. You know you've got some more. You go over here, and you can literally just add one or two. Okay. Add one or two. Mm -hmm. And if you get down and be like, okay, I know I've only got two left, just add two, and just and roll with that, okay? And then and, whenever... And two is in just the numeral two, or go to 118, or... Is that what, no, this is this, this will be to zero. It'll so be to just zero. Go one to two. Just go to the number two. You could add eight. You could okay, add a hundred. Gotcha. You, you can yeah. put it wherever you want. Yeah, but I, I don't know is, what that is. Yeah. yeah, and you can just you scroll yeah. to whatever you want. Whenever you're ready to go, um, or you you put the new strapping on it, go up and hit reset strapping. Okay. If you're tired of playing from 122 the next eight or ten bundles, and you are comfortable with pushing that number on a preset, you can go in here to settings. Okay. Reset strapping preset. I could set that thing up to 150. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So there's just a lot of cool things that you can adjust for yourself. I, I don't know why I'm not writing some of this down. Is it's, he making it's, a video? You got an iPad, watch right? The video? Do you, I? you got an iPad, right? I got it out in the truck. We're going to set it up before I leave. <laughs> it's already written down. It's right here. Okay. Um, it, it's on the iPad. Is it a certain version? 200. Oh, as far, as far as the version of the iPad or version of the machine? iPad. Um, there is some older iPad versions that um, the uh, app won't work with, but most, all newer ones will, right? Well, that's why I said, is there a one you, I'm sorry, that's no, one you start with? Everything like 2014 and newer should work, right? I was thinking, well... Okay, 2014 is a lot longer ago than it feels like, yeah. okay? So I don't know. We've got a list of all the version numbers and apps, all that stuff that'll work. So uh, we'll just have to check it off that list as far as... I, I feel like we got what we need because mm -hmm. we had to get a new iPad for the stuff we added to our vapors mm -hmm. yeah. for yeah. things. 2014, we came out with it, so if it's newer than that, it'll definitely work. Oh, that's right. I guess it was 2014 when we came out with it. Okay, yeah. So anyway, um, you're reversing your uh, um, chains. Mm -hmm. You can do that all right here. Up, down, and you can pause it. Okay? And that's the vertical chain. That's the vertical chain. You can't okay. touch the horizontal. The only horizontal yeah. you can do, well, you can touch the horizontal, you, but you can't reverse it. Okay. Okay? Doing this is the same as pushing that little red right. tab down on there, except for that gets hot. Yeah. <laughs> it gets real hot. But anyway, strap gut arms. You can move those up and down. Um, sometimes the uh, um, the extended hay sweeps. You say you get a busted bundle up here and you clean it all up out here and you think it's good and you leave a big old hunk down there. It's not going to hurt anything, but it might break off those extended hay sweeps. And if it breaks off the extended hay sweeps, you'll get chaff built up here. Okay. Oh, that's those little. That's yeah, these. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So see this right here? Yeah. Um, so that just kind of sweeps and get it and there's you know we've we've opened this up and everything and let that shaft fall down through there to kind of make it you know easier but uh, this sweeps that back and forth so when those strap guard arms come down and they land on this um, if those extended hay sweeps are broken off it'll just keep packing it and packing it packing it. and when it can't go all the way down it's not going to read on the sensor bar that's another thing I haven't even opened up yet as far as telling you about uh, but anyway, it's, it, sensor bar is exactly like a reed switch. It just looks different, and I'll just I'll, I'll teach you that. But anyway, so if the strap guard arms can't make it all the way down to the bottom position, it stops and says, waiting on strap guard arms at bottom position. 
well they're there they just can't get down far enough and so with that you can come in here throw it in manual mode move them up a little bit hit e stop stop them shut your hydraulics on the tractor clean it off and good to go okay, okay? so there's there's different things like that um, that just makes this super handy to do um now for you on model 100 since i'm here i'm jumping over a little bit but i want to i want to make sure i keep you um in tune with this so say you've got that same issue right mm -hmm. strap got arms coming down but you don't have an ipad to move it up and down okay by looking at the top of that electrical box you're going to see that five and six din connectors are going to run your strap cut arms. So you see six here mm -hmm. and five here. Mm -hmm. When you look on there, you can see which one is telling it to go up and which one's telling it to go down. Okay? Now, every single directional valve, uh, you see the, uh, the blue coils on them? See how every single wire goes to a coil. Okay. Okay? The coil is what, when it's energized, acts as a magnet, it's an electromagnet, right? acts as a magnet, and that's what actually shifts your thing. So um, on, say, your, your strap gun arms, you got a coil on the front, and you got a coil on the back, okay? Now, if your green light in your electrical box is telling you that strap gun arms are going down, which would make sense if it's saying waiting on strap gun arms at bottom position, and you look at it, and can you tell me which one is uh, up or down? Which one says strap got arm down? Is it number five or is it number six? Uh, well, I don't say oh, that, that. So according to, uh, according to that at five, five. five. So at this point, I know from the monitor that it's saying waiting for strap got arms to be in the down position. That means it's sending it down. Right. And I know that number five should be energized because it's sending it down. So I can take my screwdriver and I can loosen up number five, okay? And I can put it over here on six, okay? Now this is where you gotta know, be careful what you're doing because this is when you're in manual mode, okay? When you put five over on six, it doesn't know it's changing it and it's gonna move your strap guard arms up. And at that point, hit that thing, shut off the hydraulics your tractor, go clean it out because you picked those strap guard arms up off the, right. the straw or the hay or whatever it is. You clean that out, come back, Put that over where it's supposed to, and then pull that sucker back out, turn your hydraulics on, boom, it's going to start working again. Let me make sure I got this off. That's, that's just the old crap thunder and it can't get down. Right. I've looked at my box and I see my lights. Mm -hmm. And I see where it's at, but, it, but my lights have got it where I, So you're telling me that swap that just get it to move and then get out so, i mean is it how quick is this at, at, at this point you're not even looking at the lights right oh okay there's no reason to open up the box there's nothing if it's waiting on strap gun arms to be at bottom position and you look and they're down there but they're not reading then you just go over and you swap those given what's on the diagram it move it up yeah, stop, stop it clean it out it. and go back down so I guess my question, because I've never seen it run, uh -huh. are, are we talking like, mm. are we talking? Well, at this point, with the strap arms being in the bottom position, they've got three bales on it. Yeah. Not to mention the vertical plunger is closed because it's right. wanting it's to compress it, compressed. but it's not going to send it down until the ver strap guard arms get all the way to the bottom position. Right. So it's up, waiting for the strap guard arms to get down. So whenever you lift that back up, it's just going to come up and touch the, uh, okay. the vertical plunger. It ain't going any farther. Okay. It's not moving that vertical plunger. It's just yeah, it's just going to squeeze a little bit. You hit the e-stop, and then uh, clean it out, and you're good so to once go. Once you hit that, that can't move. Right. I don't want to be the one squeezed. <laughs> What's that? But I do that with the iPad. I you can do that with the iPad. iPad. Okay. But here's the thing. You still want to know how to manually do it, because there's things with the iPad, whenever we get into like deep tech support and stuff like that, I want you to understand how the machine works, so you're just like, yeah, I got that. Like the things that we have lost off of ourselves. Yeah. If everything else fails, we have to do it carefully, yeah. we might need to swap over. Exactly. Cool. But I want you guys, when you guys look at that manifold, I want you to understand that the coils show you direction. You know what I'm saying? It's, so all of them's not an in on the front and out on the back? No. 
Not always. <laughs> okay. So we have fail safes in there to where if you lose electricity, you lose this, that, and the other, they go in the safest place possible. You see what I'm saying? Like your e-stop, the safety valve that shuts everything off to the machine. If you lose electric, yeah. it shuts off. Its normal state is in the closed position. That's one of several different uh, fail safes we have in there. We don't want electric. It's like uh, your, uh, oh man, I'm going to get the terms wrong. What's the, uh, the types of brakes they have on uh, tractor trailers? Yeah, is it when they lose the air, it locks up the wheels. You see the big old skid marks? When you lose electric, you're, it's safe, you know?